Hi, I'm Josh Ozersky on eHow.com. Well, being a meat man, I'm frequently asked how to make a steak. And it is my opinion that the best steak doesn't come from being cooked over mesquite charcoals or in a specialty broiler, nor is it cooked in a sous vide bag or any of them other places. I like to cook a steak in a pan on my range, and I think that's the best way. Now, there's a lot of different ways to do it. I mean, sometimes in a restaurant, they'll actually have foaming butter and they'll arrow say it or whatever. I'm not getting into that. I'm putting some olive oil in a pan. I just smashed up a couple of garlics. They're going to go in there too, solely for the purpose of flavoring them. And then, of course, they get all brown and toasty, so you serve them alongside the steak. But the essence of any kind of steak cookery is the steak itself. You've got to start off with a great steak and then more or less get out of the way. Now this steak here, I've had marinating. It's a beautiful bone-on ribeye, prime, true prime. That is to say it is abundantly marbled, according to the language of the USDA. It's been sitting here with parsley and garlic and pepperoncino. But you could see it has all this beautiful marbling. It's a rib steak, so it's really two separate steaks. The eye and the deckle, or lip. The eye, which is exquisitely marbled on its own, is a um, very tender and delicious cut. The, the beautiful cap or lip that we call the deckle technically is the spinalis dorsi muscle. And that is so good, the most perfect piece of meat in the entire beef carcass. So the thing with me with a steak is if you're going to make a steak, you should make a ribeye steak. Or, I mean, you could have a skirt steak or whatever, but like, get a good one, like spend the money on it. Like, who eats steak that often? You know, if you're going to have the steak, get a great steak. And always season it liberally with coarse kosher salt. This wonderful substance becomes this amazing crust. It, it has it doesn't just have a flavor of its own, but it enhances the flavor of anything that it touches. You can hardly put too much of it on. I'm putting on a little bit of black pepper too, but black pepper, which by the way, just from the bottle, not hand ground. Don't kill yourself trying to grind black pepper. The th fact of the matter is that salt is what matters most in life. And now I'm gonna take this steak. I got this wicked hot. It's gonna go down. This pan is technically just big enough to fit the steak. Ideally, I would like to have a pan, you know, like the fried chicken men have that's like this big, because I would like this area to be in the very middle of it. The middle part of the pan is the hottest part, and that's what you really want to nail on that steak. Here's something else you should know. Steaks should be left alone. You should not monkey with them, you should not potchkey with them, you should not move them around, you shouldn't flip them multiple times. All that does is make them worse. The essence of meat cookery is absent. Essentially, it is what Bruce Lee called the way of fighting without fighting. I got the pan hot, the meat is very good meat, it was strongly seasoned, now I drop it in and I kind of more or less forget about it. Now I'm about to flip this because on the bottom I can tell is very crusty, it's very brown. That salt has formed an incredible mahogany surface underneath it. But at the same time, the meat inside is raw. Part of that is because it's a thick piece of steak. Another part of it is because it's got a bone on. Any steak you cook with a bone has got what we physicists call a heat sink. That means that it sucks all the heat out of it and keeps it cold. Steaks with bones take longer to cook than steaks without bones. That's one of the things that's good about a bone on steak because then you can really nail that crust, really hit it. Now, this is gonna be so nice. Look at that, oh my God. And I'm gonna flip it and I'm gonna put it into a 350 degree oven. That's where it's gonna finish cooking. Then it's gonna have even radiant heat coming at it from every side. Then I'm gonna settle it. Then I'm gonna eat it. That's how it is. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to wait about five to seven minutes. I think that should probably be long enough because that thing was going wicked hot. And then uh, it'll be time to let the steak rest. So I'll catch you back here in five minutes. All right, so look at this. 
But since I got to wait for it, and I got all this delicious beef fat with all this garlic, why don't I make hash browns? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grate this potato, and we're going to make some nice, delicious, the Waffle House style shredded hash browns, a delicious lacy latke, a lattice work of starch and salt and potato flavor. Oh my God, look at this. Wait till, the, what's really amazing about this, as incredible as this looks, is that it all wants to stick together. I'm gonna basically turn this into one giant latke. But you'll notice, and here's the key thing, there's a lot of space in between the different See how it's like kind of like got this Jackson Pollock effect where there's all this space in the, let me get some salt in there. There's all this space in between the interstitiuses. What that is causing is the, the steam to have a place to go so that as it leaves, the shreds will all bond with each other. All right, let me jack this up a little bit. Oh boy, look at that. This is gonna be a magnificent side dish. Look at this here. Oh my God. Now let's do the steak. This steak seems about ready. So I'm going to cut it off the bone like so. All right. The bone goes aside. I'm going to cut this deckle off here. Oh my God. Look at that. Comes right off. The bing. Take this fat here. That goes away. The deckle is so amazing that I want to serve it up as like little finger foods. So here's my little deckle pieces like that. Now I have my steak. I'm just going to cut this into perfect little medium slices. If I want, I can dress these with a little olive oil or whatever. And who knows, maybe I will do that. Oh my God, it just seems, it's almost a shame to put anything on it. This, this meat is so extraordinary. Maybe I'll even create a sort of like dramatic effect, like it's tumbling, like they're tumbling onto each other. That's what it's supposed to look like. All right, so then this is here like this, and a little bit more salt. A little bit of salt like this. A little bit of pepper, because that internal meat didn't really get the seasoning on it. It's only on the outside, but now, we have a perfect steak to go with a perfect hash brown. I'm Josh Ozerski. Thank you for watching. Check me out again on ehow.com. <laughs>